Czechoslovakia it said to turn off the auto white balance. Yeah. Oh. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either, but that's what you just said. Turn off the auto white balance because they guess you can't get a good view. Oh. Yeah, but I, I, I don't want to turn it off because if you do that, I'll have to turn it off. Wow. Well, maybe you should turn off for a second and do that, and then that way he can make a good video. Yeah. Try it. All right. Good news.
Keith Adams, Molly Wade, and Gordon. Thank you so much for all that you've done to help along the way. Now, we decided to organize tonight's recognitions into two separate groups. The first one we're calling the Pioneers. And the Pioneers are, are persons who, or a group that originates or help, helps to open up a, a new line of thought or activity. One of the first to settle in a territory. And our Pioneers were among the first to grace the halls of St. Thomas. Our religious Pioneers in Connecticut, sisters, hope you're doing good. We're set to establish a high school that would educate students and that would fulfill their duties to God and their fellow men. Our lay pioneers were young men, fresh off college campuses and looking to establish themselves as teachers, coaches, and role models. Little did they know when they agreed to come to St. Thomas they would have such a profound impact on so many lives. But we knew they did. We experienced Sister Aloysius' passion for history, and colleges, where she wanted to go to college. We experienced Sister Blaze keeping the library quiet, and Sister Nora for teaching Latin in a way that actually made sense. We learned that a pipe and a fly tying tool were an essential part of Mr. Talibo's history class, or that Mr. O'Connor could juggle more jobs at SDA than any man alive, or that Mr. Weeks was able to fit three boys from Greenland, New Hampshire, his wife and their newborn child into the Volkswagen Beetle, and to drive to Dover Point. Our pioneers are remarkable people. I'm sure many of you here tonight think of them often, as do I. When I speak to my friend and classmate, Steve Corbett, we always talk about Mr. Weeks and what a difference he's made in our lives. So it's time to learn about our inductees, why they deserve to be recognized by us tonight. And it's my pleasure to bring up Brian Fogey, who will be our master of ceremonies. Brian? I will attempt to do the honorees justice with uh, the words that are in front of me here and try to bring them to life. You lived a lot of these uh, experiences with these inductees, and uh, you as inductees have lived it, so I will attempt to do it justice. Uh, of course, the lady said we're not getting any younger, so I do need my glasses. <laughs> when you first look at the page and it's very blurry, it's gonna be a long night. And uh, as I read these biographies, a couple times, uh, for those of you who might not know, uh, the school sisters of Notre Dame, occasionally I might say SSNB, so if I say that, you know, what is that? It's the school sisters of Notre Dame, so. All right, let's get started. Sister Josephia Sheen, founder, past principal of faculty. Helen Teresa Sheehy was born in Roxbury in 1904. She was baptized at Our Lady of Perpetual Health for the School Sisters of Notre Dame Time. Her parents came from Ireland, and her brother John later became Dr. Sheehy, a beloved local doctor in the parish for many years. After eighth grade, Helen attended high school at the School Sisters of Notre Dame in Baltimore and then professed her first vows in 1922 as Sister Mary Dosithia. She made her final profession in 1930. In her early years, she taught grade school classes in Rochester, New York, Long Island, New York, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her part-time ministries included piano lessons, church organists, and sacristy. From 1941 to 1956, Sister Dosithia was at the Academy of the Holy Angels in Fort Lee, New Jersey. She served as the director of high school girls called aspirants, who thought they might like to become sisters. They boarded at the school, and she was much loved by them. Sister Dosithia then moved to high school teaching 
and Catholic, and Girls Catholic in Malden, Massachusetts, until she was appointed principal and founder of St. Thomas Aquinas High School in 1960. In this pioneering ministry, her good humor and ability to roll with whatever happened never deserted her. The school sisters' faculty increased from six to 23 by 1964, the year of the first graduation. She was the inspiration behind all of the clubs, sports, and activities they started. Recalls one student, quote, Sister Josithia really changed my mind about principles. In grammar school, they were unapproachable, and I was shocked how, how welcoming she was as we entered her office. She would initiate dialogue when passing us in the hall, and it made me feel important that she had spoken to me. I will never forget a comment she made on my report card saying that I would go far and would succeed in my future accomplishments. I always remember this, and it really boosted my self-esteem that she had such faith in me." End quote. Another student said that Sister Josephia made Latin come alive for her. Sister left St. Thomas Aquinas in 1969 and went to Archbishop Walsh High School in Irvington, New Jersey. She remained there until she moved to the Mother House in Will, Connecticut. She was there until her health mandated a move to Lord's Health Care Center on the Wilton property. Sister Josephia lived to be 92 years old, and she passed away at Lourdes in 1997. She was a beloved principal and Latin teacher, and is remembered fondly by many of us for leading the STA pioneer group of sisters for nine years. Founder and first principal of St. Thomas Aquinas High School, please join me in honoring Sister Josephia as a 2016 Hall of Honor inductee. Founder and past faculty. Margaret Donovan was born in Charlestown, Mass. in 1901 of Irish parents. She grew up in St. Thomas Parish in Jamaica Plain, but attended grammar school at Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Roxbury. Her high school years were at the Academy of the Holy Angels in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Margaret entered the SSND in 1918, and she made her first vows in 1927. Sister Blaze was a great, truly dedicated teacher of English, algebra, and history. She was a famous eighth grade teacher from 1921 to 1951 at three New York SSND schools, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Rochester, as well as Irvington, New Jersey. Her students often came on Saturdays to read America Magazine and to perfect their essay writing skills. Many of her boys attended Regis, the elite tuition-free Jesuit high school in Manhattan. Several of them became Jesuits, of which Blaze was very proud. In 1951, Blaze helped found a new parish high school in Irvington called Monsignor Walsh. In 1956, she went to Mission High School, Our Lady of Perpetual Health in Roxbury. She came to STA in 1960 and spent the rest of her life there. She was an excellent vice principal to Sister Josithia, as well as the founder of the school library. Unofficially, she was also a tutor and friend to numerous students who might be failing. Nothing that could serve a student was too much for Blaze. STA alumni, especially in the classes of 64 and 65, remember the classes in which she used her prodigious vocabulary to such numerous effect. One student recalls, quote, she was a one in a million teacher. She was so passionate about math and made me love it all as well. She is what I refer to as a burnt marshmallow Crusty on the outside and so soft inside. That's a great quote. She spent something of herself on every student. When she worked countless hours each summer creating individualized programs. 
And then, in September, she would sit in the library for days making adjustments. When Sister Blaze left her library for the last time on May 7, 1969, two facts were obvious. That she had come to the end of her service to students. And that that service of 50 years had truly been great. Characteristically, she would have acknowledged neither fact. Blaze had always wanted to die, quote, with my boots on. And she did. In the middle of prom finances, still teaching small civics class, still caring for the chapel, still keeping things straightened up in her library. She was attempting to go to school that next day, but was taken instead to New England Baptist Hospital in Boston and died there on May 13, 1969. 47 years ago tonight. A funeral liturgy of the resurrection was held in the gym at STA. A quote written by Sister Nora from her obituary in the Aqua News said, It is no pious cliche, but a simple truth that Sister Blaze, every day of her life, gave all of her very considerable energy and talent to God through young people. That is why, in the end, she was so totally weary. And why, in her life and death, all of us, teachers and students, must be deeply inspired. We are pleased to induct Sister Blaze Donovan, founder and teacher, into the 2016 St. Thomas Aquinas Hall of Honor. years 
at SDA and was one of the four sisters who left in the first changeover. She later taught in Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Damaris, New Jersey. In the meantime, she also received the National Science Foundation grant to get her master's in math at Manhattan College. She later returned to BC for her master's in counseling. She spent 25 years teaching math and 25 years as a guidance counselor. Her last assignment was at Caroline House in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This facility was started by SSND in 1995 to help immigrant women improve their lives and that of their children. This included on-site child care so the women could learn. Sister Michaela spent five years teaching English to mainly Hispanic women. She describes these women as so eager to learn, which made, made it a very fulfilling endeavor. She finally retired and moved to the SSND Mother House in Wilton, Connecticut in 2008. Since several of the SDA sisters reside there, they're often heard sharing funny stories of their time at SDA. Sister Michaela was very happy to be able to return to Ireland with her younger sister in September of 2015 for a visit. They managed to connect with many cousins and other relatives on a remarkable vacation. Since retiring, Sister Michaela has had the opportunity to visit St. Thomas Aquinas High School several times for reunions, the 50th Jubilee, and other celebrations. She's enjoyed reconnecting with former students, sharing stories, recalling fond memories. Michaela is truly a light in darkness. Sister Michaela wants all of us to know how deeply honored she is to be included with this year's Hall of Honor inductees. She never really thought about it while she was there, but she's thrilled that the early days of SDA are being remembered. She hopes that the younger alumni know how special those early years were to our community. It's our distinct pleasure to induct Sister Michaela Durkin into the 2016 Hall of Honor. Students. 
For example, one of them from the class of 1965 says, quote, I became a history teacher and I taught for 39 years at the high school level. I had several occasions where I was asked about my love of history and social studies, and I always gave credit to Sister Aloysius. She was very demanding, but I learned to appreciate all that she expected of me, both in class and as a person. I would have loved to have been able to tell her how much she influenced me and how grateful I am to her. Sister Mary Agnes retired from teaching in 1982, but supervised two library periods for more than two years. In 1984, she came to the Mother House in Wilton, Connecticut. She died in 1997 on the 67th anniversary of her first profession of vows. It's our pleasure tonight to induct Sister Mary Agnes Aloysius to the 2016 St. Thomas Aquinas Hall of Honor. Now we'd like to recognize Sister Kay O'Connell, formerly Sister Nora, founder and past faculty. Sister Kay, known as Sister Nora, in her days at St. Thomas Aquinas, grew up in Roxbury, Mass, where she attended grammar school and high school taught by the school sisters of Notre Dame. Her father's employer, the Ford Motor Company, awarded her a scholarship to attend college at Notre Dame, Maryland, where she majored in English and minored in French. Following graduation, Sister Kay spent three years as a postulant and novice at the SSNB Mother House, and then professed her vows. Her career then commenced with a year teaching a fifth grade class in Washington, D.C., and another teaching sixth grade in New Jersey. Then, at the age of 25, she was assigned to a new high school in Dover, New Hampshire. Sister remembers the early years at St. Thomas Aquinas as being pretty bare bones. Sister Kay and her fellow sisters lived for two years at the top floor of the school. She recalls teaching a full load of five English classes every day, plus religion, to her homeroom. Each class was large, by today's standards, between 35 to 40 students, who to this day she remembers fondly as, quote, very good kids. We had a tool, didn't we? <laughs> the sisters had to cook their own meals, but apparently serious culinary skills were not widely distributed, as Sister Kay and Sister Esther Mary prepared most of the meals. The sisters were paid for only 10 months of the year and given a modest stipend of just $90 a month. Can you imagine living on an annual salary of $900? Sister Kay stayed at St. Thomas Aquinas High School for nine years. For the last five, she studied each summer working on her master's degree in English at Boston College. During the school year, she was the faculty director of our school newspaper, The Aquinas, giving her an opportunity to teach her young journalists how to write creatively and how to proofread. In 1969, she departed to the SSND Mother House in Wilton, Connecticut. There she spent a year as director of postulants, soon to be nuns, followed by a year in Rome to study theology. Returning to Wilton, she served four years on the governing board of the SSND order, and two and a half years in Chicago studying for a master's in theology. She subsequently was elected provincial, who top position at the SSND Wilton Province. At that time, the province included nearly 700 sisters in New England, New York, and New Jersey. As provincial, she traveled internationally to SSND missions in Africa and South America. In recent years, she's authored books on the history of both the Wilton Province and its successor, the Atlantic Midwest Province. These days, Sister Kay says, she is retired. She loves to read, with books of history and poems being her favorite. Due to some physical issues, she doesn't travel as much as she has in the past, 
and regrets she cannot be here tonight. But she wants us all to know she remembers fondly the years she devoted to teaching us very good kids. And we, who are blessed to have her as a teacher and mentor, remember her and honor that memory tonight. It's our pleasure to adopt Sister Kay O'Connell, Sister Nora, into the 2016 St. Thomas Aquinas Hall of Honor. Next, we'd like to recognize Sister Esther Mary Prendergast, founder and past faculty. Sister Esther Mary grew up in the Mission Hill section of Boston. Following high school, she enrolled in Emanuel College in Boston, but left there after two years to join the school sisters in Notre Dame. SSND directed her to finish her college education at the College of Notre Dame in Maryland in Baltimore, one of the country's first institutions of higher educated for women, or education for women that was founded by the SSND in 1873. There she majored in French and developed a lifelong passion for studying languages. Over her career, she studied and taught French, Latin, and Spanish. Following graduation from Notre Dame, Sister Esther taught a class of fifth graders in Ozone Park, New York. With that somewhat limited teaching experience, Sister Esther was chosen to move to the brand new St. Thomas Aquinas High School. At SPA, she taught both Latin and French. Sister would end up staying 11 years there, leaving in 1971 with many great memories of her students. Today, as she thinks back, she remembers devoting countless hours to decorating the gym for prom nights. She loved watching her students enjoying themselves at the prom and other dances. And she especially enjoyed working with Sister Gerard Mary on selecting costumes for the annual school operetta. Sister was very proud of her students and was thrilled by their successes, particularly those that did well on their national Latin exams. She also enjoyed the relationship she, she had with her sisters in Christ. Both before and after leaving STA, Sister was not just a teacher, but also a student. She received two master's degrees from Boston College. She took courses during the summer to earn a master's in religious education. Later, she would earn a master's degree in psychology and education. Her post-St. Thomas teaching assignments included several years at Cathedral Prep, a boys' school in Manhattan, and at Ursuline Academy, a girls' high school out of Massachusetts. In answer to the question, what do you want to be most remember remembered for? Sister Esther says she hopes her former students recall her as a nice teacher who got them to laugh in the classroom. In fact, they do remember her for that and so much more. One of them told us this, quote, Although I wasn't a good Latin student, Sister went out of her way to be patient with me and help me understand the language. We had a couple of guys who were a real challenging class, but Sister never, uh, sister never lost patience with them and, and helped them grow and mature. Another former student recalls Sister as being sometimes shy and not infrequently found blushing a bright pink. Especially memorable was how she seemed so self-conscious the, the day she first wore the nun's new habit. Sister Esther Mary has returned to the area for many reunions and SDA celebrations. In 2008, she celebrated her own jubilee as a school sister of Notre Dame. These days, Sister Esther is enjoying her retirement years at the SSND Mother House in Wilton, Connecticut. And when not there, she can sometimes be found teaching English to Hispanic women in the basement of an old church. That is our Sister Esther, a lifelong teacher who is fondly remembered for teaching the first 11 years at St. Thomas Aquinas High School, and who is now celebrated as a 2016 Hall of Honor inductee.
Next, we recognize Sister Ramonda Smith, founder, past principal, and faculty. Ruth Eileen Smith was born in 1925 and grew up in Malden, Massachusetts. She attended SSND schools for both elementary and high school. One of her fondest high school memories is that of acting in the school plays. She always had the leading role, and, and since the plays were usually comedies, she became very good at making the audience laugh. She says her most challenging role was that of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, described as a frail, aristocratic lady. She wants us all to know that she definitely conquered that challenge. Ruth entered the SSND order at the age of 18 in 1943 and took the name of Sister Mary Raimunda to honor her father. She said her first vows in 1946 and was sent to Puerto Rico at the age of 20. By this time, she had her BS in education and was assigned to teach fifth grade. Her students didn't know much English and sister knew less Spanish. She describes the time as Spanish immersion. Every night she would work for an hour learning Spanish from a fellow sister and then another hour learning how to teach the next day's class in Spanish. Then on Saturdays she would take three hours of Spanish class so she learned the language very quickly. Sister Raymunda lived in Puerto Rico for 14 years. During this time, she had an opportunity to teach most grades from 1st to 12th grade. Then in 1960, she was sent to the new diocesan high school in Dover, New Hampshire, one of seven SSNDs assigned to open this school. In addition to teaching, she was told to start the speech and drama clubs and to develop a debating team. Some of you may know this last charge became Sister Raimunda's claim to fame. She turned the new STA debate team into a national power in just two to three years. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause. Thank you. And somehow, and no one really knows how, she managed to, quote, get in the face of every person in the national college uh, level, and she ran the high school debate tournaments. She got her teams invited to 20 to 30 tournaments a year, and they started winning many of these national tournaments. One of her debaters described Sister Raimunda as a consummate politician. He said that she coached us by throwing us in the deep end of the pool to see if we could swim. She would bring in local lawyers to cross-examine her debaters to teach them that skill knowing that her powerhouse debaters would soon graduate, she would set up demo debaters by the seniors to encourage freshmen to join the team, ensuring the continuation of strong talent. Many of her debaters have said that she had a, had a major impact on their lives, exposing them to all kinds of people and instilling them with self-confidence. From late September to April each year, this group, along with their amazing coach, would be in a car every weekend heading to some regional or national tournament. Sister Raimunda left STA briefly in 1968 for a year as principal of Girls Catholic High School in Walton, Mass. And then was back to STA as principal from 1969 to 1973. She was later the principal of Notre Dame Education Educational Center in Lawrence, Massachusetts a language school for immigrants. In 2000, Sister came to Villa Notre Dame in Wilton, Connecticut, where she had some challenging health issues for a few, few years, but at the present time, she says she's enjoying excellent health. Sister Raimunda has had many fond memories of her time at STA and wishes she could be here to celebrate with all of us here tonight. Please join me in acknowledging Sister Raimunda at the 2016 John Jack O'Connor, founder, 
past faculty and coach. In the 1940s, many a young man growing up in Fitchburg might have wondered what to do with his life. This was not a problem for Jack O'Connor. Jack attended St. Bernard's Central Catholic High School, where he developed a standard of excellence both in and out of the classroom. Jack excelled in football and basketball for St. Bernard's and was elected president of the senior class. His character and leadership resulted in him receiving the All Bernardian Award his senior year. After high school, Jack chose to pursue his higher education at St. Anselm College, where he played basketball and became the sports editor for the college newspaper and a member of the Red Key Honor Society. After graduating from St. A's, Jack decided to further his education by getting his master's degree at Fitchburg State College, where he was naturally drawn to the world of teaching and coaching. How fortunate for the St. Thomas Aquinas community. Jack's high school career began with positions at St. Patrick High School in Berlin, and then two two-year positions at the new Boston High School. In 1960, Jack would make a decision that would help shape the future of St. Thomas Aquinas High School. Mr. O'Connor joined the faculty of St. Thomas Aquinas and assumed many hats at the new school. He was a social studies teacher, a basketball coach, golf coach, cross country coach, and the athletic director. I bet somewhere in there he did the laundry as well. During his time at St. Thomas Aquinas, Jack met and married Eileen Mary O'Sullivan a young teacher from Boston College, and together they would raise their five children in that good old Irish way. Two of their children were actually baptized in the St. Thomas Aquinas Chapel. We're pleased that three of Jack's sons have joined us here tonight, along with his grandson Jack. We'd like to welcome him. Jack's sons could be here. The missing son um, couldn't be here and leave his duties. He is the assistant basketball coach of the Los Angeles Clippers basketball team. So we're going to forgive him for that. <laughs> coach O'Connor taught and coached at St. Thomas Aquinas until 1966 when he made the decision to leave and take a teaching position at Goffstown High School, where he remained until 1969. Coach was active in high school sports as a member of the New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association, or NHIAA, and serving as president of the New Hampshire Basketball Coaches Association. Teachers sometimes develop an interest that can fill up empty summer months. Well, in 1965, Coach O'Connor combined his interest in business and his love of golf and became the owner of the Bedford Golf Land in Bedford, New Hampshire. Because life is only rewarding when we have multiple balls in the air. In 1966, he decided to open the Lamplighter Restaurant and established his business as one of the most successful restaurants in New England. A passionate Irishman, Coach O'Connor made the Lamplighter a signature location for Irish music in New Hampshire, packing the house night after night. But the desire to teach is not a vocation that you can easily shake off. Using all the tools developed as a teacher, Jack O'Connor became the public education and training officer at the New Hampshire Department of Safety for the 911 program. Traveling throughout New Hampshire, he provided important information to citizens and schools on the importance of the 911 public safety system, receiving awards and recognitions for his important contributions to the safety and well-being of New Hampshire citizens. Active in his church and his community, Jack O'Connor was acknowledged as a true leader in his community by being named the Grand Marshal of the 2015 Manchester St. Patrick's Day Parade. Please join me in honoring a fine Irish Catholic man who helped blaze the trail 
in formation and development of our beloved St. Thomas Aquinas High School, and those impact the contributions that he's helped to make and shape this fine institution into the gem that it is today. Mr. Jack O'Connor. Never waned. 
He's visited most of the Civil War battlefields on the East Coast, and he's even shared those experiences with his students, taking several with him to experience a reenactment of the Battle of Gettysburg. Over the years, Mr. Bellavo has been recognized for his outstanding teaching ability as well as his athletic prowess. In 1988, he was honored to receive the Daughters of the American Revolution History Teacher of New Hampshire Award. And in 1989, he was inducted into the Cyril's High School Basketball Hall of Fame in recognition for his athletic accomplishments. Mr. Bellavo's quick wit, charisma, and healthy sense of humor made him one of the most beloved teachers to ever walk the halls of St. Thomas Aquinas. He shared his personal passions with his students and was quick, quick to contribute to student life both in and out of the classroom. For example, an avid fly fisherman, Mr. Bellavo shared his skill for fishing by offering fly tying lessons during several winter term courses at St. Thomas Aquinas. He thoroughly enjoys seeing former students who often remind him of funny stories, share experience, and even comical nicknames they can still recall. Mr. Bellavo's love for history is only surpassed by his love of family. In 1963, he married Simone Gagne, or Gagne, excuse me, and was blessed with three beautiful daughters, Jody, Camille, and Emily, who have all graduated from St. Thomas Aquinas High School. He's also been blessed by three grandchildren. Rebecca, who currently lives in Alabama with her husband and two beautiful children. Danielle, who graduated from St. Thomas Aquinas in 2014. And Adam, who will be graduating from STA this May. Wow. In 2004, Mr. Bellavo ended his illustrious 39-year career with St. Thomas Aquinas High School and entered retirement. His final, oh, his final, his days, not final yet, no, his days, his days are now joyfully filled with family time, gardening, of course fly fishing, bird watching, traveling to visit his daughter, Camille in Virginia, and participating in the lives of his grandchildren. He's an ardent gardener and tries desperately to outwit the garden pests every year. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing an amazing man, teacher, athletic director, coach, Chief Bellavo. Thank you, Mr. 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 Bellavo. Thank you, Mr
This choice would be a monumental decision in the lives of thousands of young people who would learn and grow under his guidance. Coach Weeks joined the St. Thomas Aquinas staff as a math teacher and assistant coach at the tender age of 21. He was so young he was even mistaken for a student when he was caught talking in the hall between classes by one of the sisters. During his first year of coaching, STA went on to its first undefeated season. Coach Weeks could never have envisioned how he would impact the lives of so many STA students. After a brief departure from STA, Mr. Weeks returned to spend a total of eight years as a faculty member and coach at STA. In 1972, STA lost Mr. Weeks to the Dover Greenway. Ooh. Right on cue. I knew you were gonna... Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Where he taught, coached football and lacrosse, was assistant principal and athletic director for over 25 years in Dover. The Coach Weeks would return to STA. Thank you again for that, I appreciate it. And assist another legendary coach, Ron Watt. And once again, touch the lives of many lucky STA student athletes. In the years to come, Coach Week's athletic contributions would be recognized by his induction into the UNH Hall of Fame in both football and lacrosse. Coach Weeks was also inducted into the New Hampshire chapter, the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame. In 2001, Coach Weeks and Barbara left New Hampshire's cold winters to enjoy the warmth and sun in Texas. And if you follow him on Facebook, you'll know just how hard this transition has been. For them. When Rob Weeks was told of his selection for the Hall of Honor, his reaction was to exclaim the honor was humbling and so he felt unworthy in the light of the contributions of so many others who have served the community longer. A very humble man. While the athletic achievements of Bob Weeks, the player and the coach, are well deserved and rightfully earned, the SPA community recognizes Bob Weeks as a man who made a great difference while the SPA community had him. To quote Robert Self, if there be any truer measure of a man than by what he does, it must be by what he gives. Mr. Bob Weeks, we thank you for your gifts to STA and the imprint you've left on this community. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing a remarkable teacher, coach, and all around great man, Mr. Bob Weeks. Thank you. Thank you.
if you'd like to join us on the trip, there's going to be a bus or some buses or something, and we'll, we'll see what happens. But if you're interested in going, you'd like to sign up for that tonight, you can actually reserve space tonight. The welcome table, when you came in, uh, you, can, um, you can take the form, you can make a payment. I think we're taking payments tonight if you want to do that. If you're interested, it's Friday, June 24th. No pressure, but if you'd love to go down to the, the road trip to recognize the sisters in person, we'd love for you to be there. Also, if you're feeling state's pride tonight, stop at the school store. We brought it with us. It's here at the entrance. The blue and white spirit themes. You can uh, buy some merchandise, SDA merchandise. And um, at this time, though, we'd like to ask some of the inductees to uh, come to the welcome table. So the inductees who are here, we've been recognized already, or do we want all of them? I think all of them, because of the time is so. All of the inductees tonight, if you're here, the, uh, the welcome table in the foyer, they want to do a uh, group photo. So, any of the inductees tonight, that includes Mr. Melville, uh, Bob Leach, other ones, please, the welcome table in the foyer, we'd like to take a group photo, please, tonight.